Lords, it's a great pleasure to follow the noble lady Baroness McIntosh of Pickering and to see her, as she often does, acknowledge the benefits that freedom of movement gave to her life and her opportunities and that she's seeking to preserve at least some of those for young people in the future. It's also a great pleasure to speak after the uh, noble uh, Baroness uh, Lady Bull and the noble Earl of Clancarty, who are such champions of the creative industries in your Lordship's house. And I think we've heard a great deal of powerful testimony about the economic importance of those creative industries. I do also want to take a second to focus on the importance to the quality of life of all of us and the way in which cultural exchange enriches all of our lives and the loss of that would make us much poorer in the most fundamental terms rather than just focusing on the economic. I also thank the noble uh, Lord Lord Fox for placing this amendment and all who backed it and I would urge the, this be pushed to a vote and I would very much hope that the, uh, the Labour front bench would find themselves able to support that vote of the opportunities and freedoms that we've already heard outlined. Now, I want to uh, pick up from the points of the noble lady Baroness Noakes. I'm not quite sure, given that we actually now have a deal, something along the lines of what's being outlined here with Switzerland, how this can be labelled as a pipe dream, given that this has already been achieved with one small part of Europe. And I'm not sure that the government obviously doesn't think it's a problem with take-back control, you having that agreement with Switzerland. Now, we know, of course, that Switzerland is particularly famous for banking and financial sector, but one would hope that's not the only sector that the government is focused on and wishes to see some of this kind of freedom of movement. And so my question directly to the noble lord, the minister, is looking at the government's statement on that Switzerland mobility agreement. Um, it says, UK suppliers will be able to do business in Switzerland as they do now. No economic interest tests, no work permits and no lengthy processing times. This will be open to businesses of all sizes, uh, including um, the self-employed. What is the government actually trying to achieve now in these coming few days? What is the aim? What is the aim for the next year? What is the aim for the future? And I also note that it would, it would appear that um, we have lost a chance of involvement with Erasmus Plus. So my question also is, this is built on relationships, the kind of relationships that um, the noble Baroness Lady P P uh, Macintosh of Pickering was referring to of internships, interchange studies, apprenticeships. They set up the relationships that then create the opportunity to deliver these services for British businesses. How is the government planning to ensure that those relationships are built in the future so that those opportunities remain for British businesses, British creative people, to have those interchanges. Thank you, my